Hello, Pastor Deborah here, and welcome again to another wonderful episode of that book that I wrote, The Spiritual Multitudes. We are beginning episode or part number 41. We are working through prayers that will help us to be free. And I want to thank Zoom Pro for that's who I'm recording through, and Pixabay for this wonderful motion video. I just used it in a YouTube short. I think it's excellent. It's colorful. I haven't recorded in a while because I had so many. I was editing them, uploading them, uh, getting premieres set for several months ahead, taking a break, watching a lot of historical dramas from many different countries, learning, growing, seeking more that I don't know about. So here in this Spiritual Multitudes, this volume number three of Agape Love, The Greatest Gift, we're going to pick up in number 41. But let's first open up with prayer so you will have a heart that's ready, no barriers in between you, as spiritual light comes from Pastor Deborah. I am not the spiritual light. I am releasing it unto you. But it comes through my soul. And if you're with me in the spirit, in the garden where I always record, it is coming through my spirit. It is the light of truth, knowledge, righteousness, wisdom, and most of all, agape love, which is filled with many, many things. Forgiveness, compassion, mercy, justice, righteousness, glory, majesty. One word with lots in it. So let's open up with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you have brought here today. To listen to episode part number 41 out of the wonderful book, The Spiritual Multitudes. Volume number three, did I say? Agape Love, The Greatest Gift. This is episode number 41. And we have been walking through many prayers, Father, to help you to set us free. Through our confessions, our words, our desires, we thank you for hearing us as we are trying to become better, more mature, changing, transforming our soul becoming all that you desire for us to be. Help us to understand that through Isaiah 61 and 62, what you want to do for us, the condition that we were in, the goals, the purposes, your heart for us. And give us a Hebrews 4.12 spiritual circumcision so that our spirit can be free of the soul and its lust and the miry clay that holds it bound in darkness and ignorance. Father, help us. Through this video, the spiritual teaching from me, Pastor Deborah. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. If you'll see any notices, I'm adjusting my computer just a little bit. So let's begin. We were going to start. We're going to continue to get free. Sometimes it takes a long time. There's so much in us. Our spirit needs freeing from so many unknown things that we don't know. When I was doing deliverance personally years and years ago on wonderful people who wanted to be clean and free of things that they didn't even know they had, we worked slow and meticulously. Then I learned another way to do it. God would help me. He would give me what needed to be delivered. He worked to show his power and his way. So let's begin. Father, spiritually free me. That means you. Okay. And my family. From all of Satan's strongholds. And strong men. That causes me and us. And the family to have a spiritual stiff neck. One that's full of pride and arrogance. Stubbornness. Refusing to change refusing to listen to you, believe you, 
refusing, full of pride, that I have lifted up, that has been planted in my heart. Pride, Father, in myself, my ways, what I've learned that have been implanted in me through seeds of darkness and ignorance from schools and parents and culture, religion, that lifted me up in pride. It was all about me, what I wanted. It was nothing about you. I became unbending, unbending, Father, arrogant, haughty. But nobody was going to tell me what to do. I knew what was right. I had all the answers. I was rebellious to you with arrogance, words of hate, pride. Oh, I'd call on you. Oh, God, help me. Whatever God that was. But I wouldn't bend to you. I never loved you. Didn't even know you. But I'd call on you when I needed some help. Or I'd wish on a star for something. But I wouldn't seek. Having a humble heart. One that recognizes it needed you. These strong men of Satan. They have buffeted me. Controlled me. They harass me. My dreams. And my deeds. And I've taught this to my children. I pass them on. So Father, help me. My spirit had become haughty. It was horrible perfume coming off of it. My eyes were full of haughty, rebellious fire. My spirit was not at peace. It was always at war with you. Even in my ignorance and darkness. It was always fighting, resisting. Because it knew best. And not only towards you, but towards my neighbors. Towards nature. Even if I looked righteous on the outside. I didn't have the right kind of heart. My spirit, my soul, are full of pride and haughtiness. Full of greed and unrighteous acts. Lies. Sexual immorality. Dreams of things that were horrible. That you would not like. And Father, I realized that you allowed me to go in this direction. That you had to show me the errors of my words, my deeds, my actions. And then you had to send a teacher, a master, someone to show me and let me see inside of myself. You had to unsettle my world that I had gotten comfortable in. You had to have Someone speak to me with love. Someone I could go to in the spirit. Someone who would love me. That I could cry on their shoulder. Someone who would help me learn the errors of my ways. Show me what pride. This is what this video it looks like. This is pride and greed and haughtiness in seed form. Developing and growing. Always moving and changing. Inside of your spirit. Inside of your mind and heart of your spirit. Inside your soul. Inside your physical body. Oh, many of our sicknesses and diseases, Father, in this family. Are because of pride and haughtiness. By these strong men. That have passed on through generations. Through familiar spirits with us. Father, it just keeps going on and on from generation to generation. Help us to stop it, to pull the roots up and destroy them. Father, bring my spirit, my soul and physical body into spiritual wholeness. Father, cast out away from me these spiritual strongmen of greed of pride, haughtiness, rebellion, ignorance, unbending spirit. Father, help me and my family to be set free. Bring a spiritual wholeness 
that's full of majesty, glory, beauty, and honor that not only you approve of, but others can see and know that I am one of yours. I am clean and pure and holy now. And I'm no longer rebellious, held in stubbornness, haughtiness, pride. But my spirit has learned to bow to you. My soul has learned that what the world offers is nothing but haughtiness and pride, controlled by these strong men of Satan. Seeds have been planted in me, Father. And I am bearing the fruit of those seeds. And I pass them on through my culture, my community, my family, my business. Help me, Father, to be free of this. Father, dig deep into me. Places where I don't even know that this stuff is. Father, reveal to me the power of the Satan and his strongholds of pride and haughtiness, rebellion, one that uses lies and darkness and the fear of death and torment to control me. Show me how I'm passing this on to my children through my culture, my religion, my business. Help me to be free, cleansed, pure, righteous, and holy. I don't know what it is, Father. I don't know how to be that. I don't know how to have those kind of thoughts. My thoughts and memories are horrible. I don't know what real love is. I only know culture love, tradition love. I don't know how to love someone else, where I would die for them. I would sacrifice myself for them. I don't know how to do that. Help me. Birth in me that kind of love, that agape love that your son had. Free me and this family of this heart, this mind of haughtiness and pride, and definitely cast away from me the strong men that control it. And when that process, Father, is complete, shine out of me your heart, your love, your truth, and righteousness. Teach me through many ways how to teach my children, grandchildren, cousins, aunts, uncles, my employees, my business companions, my friends. My neighbors, help me, Father, so they can look at me and say I'm changed. I've been set free of something. Then help me to teach them who I was and who held me through pride and ignorance and rebellion. Why I was like this. Father, do a work in me that others may decide that you too can help them be free. Father, free me from all the seeds and the roots that these strong men of pride and arrogance, haughtiness, have planted in me. Destroy their roots. Cut off the familiar spirits from me that transfer this. Get it out of the family. Put a shield around us and the grandchildren and nieces and aunts and uncles to come for 10,000 million generations. Send these creatures, these things of the kingdom of darkness back to their pits. Don't let them be used by any other. Don't let them be passed on to children and babies, even in the wombs. Father, I take these steps by faith that my teacher, Pastor Deborah, has taught me to trust you, that you will work in me and my family so that this agape love that you talk about, and she does, can set us free from these spiritual strong men of haughtiness and pride and greed 
and our hearts can be changed. And then our soul can be transformed. And even our physical body can come into healing from all the sickness and diseases that's in it. And I thank you, Father, that you have heard us and listened to us in this matter. That you do the work. And I will be most grateful, Father, that I can be free. My heart, my mind, my family, my community, my family, my friends, my business can be free. No longer a creature, a slave of haughtiness and pride and rebellion held by unseen chains with taskmasters and slave masters, strong men of darkness, of Satan. Thank you, Father, for hearing this petition, this prayer of desire to be free through agape love. In the name of Christ Jesus, Welcome. amen. Okay. Take a deep breath. Calm down. Deliverance is wonderful. It's very personal. You'll pray through tears, through fear. You won't even know how it will affect your life. But this God that Pastor Deborah has served all her life, who is raised up to be a global teacher, a master, so you can be a disciple. This God is a God of freedom for your spirit. He's a God that wants to transform your soul. We can look at the world today and see it's horrible. Everything we can imagine is going on. Everything. Nothing has changed. The kingdom of darkness of Satan is on our earth. And it is going well. It is powerful. Full of strong men waiting for the next generation, waiting for the babies in the womb, children in the schools, teenagers, waiting in families to continue on through generations after generations. But you can stop that right now today through this prayer. You can say you will go no farther. This is the last generation you can be. I had to do that in my own family. When my father was passing away, I taught my son that there were familiar spirits of many different kinds in my father because I had been a deliverance worker. And I closed the doors in my life and I told him to do the same thing, put a shield around us because I learned about that when I, from a story, a true story. A young man was driving and he was in Bible school and he'd heard his grandmother was dying so he left school and got in his car and was driving to uh, her hospital but before he could get there a dark shadow something like this came in his car and came into him he got kind of sent something was different but he didn't know so he went to his grandmother's hospital she died and he was buried so he goes back to Bible college. Now he can't study, can't really sleep. He doesn't have the same thoughts and hearts and desires like he used to. And eventually drops out of Bible school. What he found out, he went to some psychologist or counselors or spiritual teacher for help. He didn't know what was wrong with him. He was suicidal. And the person he went to, who God had raised up, knew. Because she went and prayed to God, what is going on with this young man? And God told her that a familiar spirit from the grandmother who had been in to witchcraft and many other things that nobody really knew about was pat all her spirits, all of her connections, were sent and passed on to him, the grandchild. And they would continue working, get him out of Bible school, get him away from God, the Bible, truth, 
and work in his life, unknown to him. And all God asked was this lady, who was, I think, a doctor, who was helping people, was to pray to him, to God, to set him free. He wouldn't understand it. He didn't believe in it. So she did. And God said, I will take care of it. And the young man got free because someone else prayed to understand what was going on, what was happening with this precious young man that he had so drastically changed. And God revealed the truth. But because the truth sometimes is so powerful, unbelievable, and it's your own family members, you don't want to believe it. You don't believe in it. So God worked through the doctor. And the doctor did a prayer of petition, prayer of deliverance, while the young man was sitting in her office. And the work of freedom had begun. And the young man recovered and got back in Bible school. He never really knew what had happened. So many of us masters and our, us teachers, we know you're not ready to know the truth yet about what's going on. You wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't understand it yet. Sometimes that takes a while for you to desire to really know. But we are healers. We are deliverance workers. We are teachers. We are to know. And even if we don't tell you, but God has taught me through the work that I learned in helping people in spiritual ministry, prayer works, deliverance prayers. You don't have to scream and yell. You don't have to go anywhere. He can do it in your dreams. He can do it through a video game. If you're asking for help, sometimes the spirit will, not the soul. The soul is usually miserable, but content. Afraid of another truth. Afraid of something. So in this video, we learned there's a strong man of haughtiness, pride, arrogance, rebellion. Gives you a stiff neck. I refuse. I'm not going to bow. Fighting spirit. That's horrible. So I wanted to come to you and say, pray. Believe. Have hope. This is just one of the deep areas that have to be cleaned up. That you have to have deliverance from. You have to have the thoughts and the images destroyed, new ones implanted. These strong men have been around since day one. They tried to have a rebellion up in heaven. Didn't work. They were cast down here with us. They are now training us. And God set a wonderful, wonderful example to show us the way. Oh, we see a lot of it. But a lot of deliverance workers, so I wouldn't go to them. We don't believe in that supernatural, but we used to. The ancient Egyptians believed in demons and devils, witchcraft, spells, curses. Ancient Greeks did. Ancient Turkey and China. That's right. The Vikings did. And they would call on gods to help them. That's right. They knew there was a spiritual world. And it influenced them. They were a part of it down here. You go study history. But when Western rationalization came in, medicine, science, we didn't want to believe in the supernatural anymore. Because that was too weird. So everything became biological. Everything became not spiritual, but yet it's still here. And those that believe in it are sort of labeled weird, even in religion. But every religion believes in them. 
They have teachers who do deliverance work. Mm -hmm. That's right. Islam does. Catholic Church does. Protestant Church does. Buddhism does. Hinduism does. That's right. They know. The teachers know. It's us students if you don't want to believe it. Don't want to believe that something could be inside of us. Controlling our thoughts. Evil and wicked. We don't even know what pride is. What is a haughty spirit? What is rebellion? We don't know. You need a teacher in your life. Oh, the ancient Chinese, they knew that young people needed to have masters and you needed to be their disciple. And you need to follow them and be taught and disciplined because they were going to rule the country. They were going to be parents, business people. They had to be honorable, understanding, read and write. They had to know history. They had to be understanding. And they were all under teachers. They called them master. Mm -hmm. And they would sit. And not only did they learn educational things, they learned philosophy. Then they would go out in the fields and work, volunteer in the community. Mm -hmm. They would read, study, go out and work. They were preparing themselves to be leaders, governors, family members, husbands, wives, community leaders. And then they learned the martial arts because they knew they were to be honorable people, fighting injustice, protecting women and innocent children, raising and feeding and caring for the orphans. But they knew they had to be under a teacher. Teachers give you guidance. But some of our teachers, they are horrible. They're not teaching truth. They're teaching confusion. Because they've got the spirit of confusion. When you hang around with Pastor Deborah, you'll learn that God she serves is not the author of confusion. So many things now are confusing. God that I serve is not behind that. He's not perverting his truth. So take another step and let God begin freeing you from the chains of spiritual haughtiness. The strong men their unseen change in your life, and you will do well. Okay, I'll see you again on the next Spiritual Multitudes. Should be episode number 42 from Agape Love, The Greatest Gift. We're almost finished with it, We have, and then we'll start another book. I've got lots of them. I'm working, working, and studying. Teachers have to always be learning themselves, reading, studying, seeking answers to deep questions, pondering. I don't get a lot of sleep. I study. I pray, I petition, I seek. I want to know many things myself, and I don't have the answers yet. There are things that are billions and billions and billions and billions of light years away from me yet. But I'm going into the galaxies to find them. I'm reaching with my thoughts, my spirit, far beyond earth, out into the realm of the kingdoms, especially the kingdom of heaven. Okay, I'll see you on the next episode of The Spiritual Multitude, Pastor Deborah. God be love. Love is here's global spiritual teaching ministry. And you can find this on its YouTube channel, The Hidden Kingdoms. I'll see you next time. Bye.